Becoming a blockchain developer is one of the fastest ways to change your career and profit off of a highly lucrative tech trend with insane future growth potential. It's not uncommon for skilled blockchain developers to make multiple six-figure salaries with proper experience, but how can you break the six-figure mark and even make $10,000 or more per month? Well, in this video, I wanna break down exactly how I did that and some shortcuts that you can take to do it much faster than you might think. I'll tell you everything you need to know this video today, you know, as a blockchain developer myself who works this technology on a daily basis. And it's helped lots of other people change their careers and break into the blockchain industry. So if you're new around here, hey, I'm Gregory, and on this channel, I turn you into a blockchain master. So if that's something that you're interested in, then smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to this channel. And if you want to take action on everything that I'm talking about today and go for the throat, I can show you to master blockchain step-by-step start -step to finish over at adaptuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. All right, so let's jump into this. Let's talk about how to make $10,000 or more per month as a blockchain developer and what is the fastest path to doing this? Well, you have a few options, okay? You could try and land a six-figure job on your first go. You might be able to do this. I've had several students do this, but there's obviously no guarantee that's gonna happen. It's not what I personally did and it's gonna be more challenging unless the opportunity just happens to drop in your lap. But if it does, by all means, go for it. So what are some other options? Well, you could get an entry-level job just to get the experience and you could try to get a raise internally. That's usually harder. Or you could try to change jobs and slowly increase your salary over time. Or lastly, you can do what I did, which is become a freelancer and start working your way to raise your rates, find new projects, and get to that level of income much faster. So let me tell you a little bit more about my background, how I did it, and then some lessons that you can learn and apply for your own strategy. So in case you don't know my background, you know I was a developer already before I got into blockchain, but I'm gonna outline what I did to break into the web 2.0 world because these principles really apply the same for web 3.0. You know, I've freelanced in web 2.0 and in web 3.0. I got to where I was making $10,000 per month as a total beginner within my first year in web 2.0. And then getting into blockchain got to the point where I was charging up to $25,000 per week on some projects. So how did I do that? Where did I get started from? Well, you know, more about my background. I don't have a computer science degree. I didn't go to a coding boot camp. You know, I got rejected from coding boot camp. So I had to teach myself on my own and break into the industry. And it was through that experience that I learned the process very deeply and over time learned to help other people replicate that process. And that's really why I created DAP University in the first place. So let me tell you the story starting at the point where I had learned enough to start getting work as a developer. At that point, I decided that I want to become a freelancer. And within a year, you know, give or take, I was making about $10,000 a month average. So how did I do it? Well, let's start with how I got my first freelancing job. Once I was ready to get started, you know, I started going to meetups in person, locally in my community. And I found a mentor who was very active in those meetups. This person was a freelancer themselves. And they saw that I was insanely zealous about becoming a developer and sensed that I was super hungry and willing to learn and actually provide value to them by working for them at a pretty modest rate to really help him out, but also gain experience for myself. So it was a huge win-win. And through that, you know, boom, I landed my first freelancing job. Now, again, this is a pretty modest job. It was part-time. I think I was only making like $3,000 per month at the time. So not a really super impressive salary on the grand scheme of things, but it was a major milestone because someone took a chance on me and I was actually making money as a professional developer. And so once I did that, the key here is that this was part-time. So I had lots of other time on my hands. I could learn more, level up my skills, and also make room for another client that might come along in the future. And so a couple months down the road, that's exactly what happened. I got a referral through the exact same mentor to work on another project. And that started paying, I think, like four or $5,000 per month at the beginning, if my memory serves correctly. And I think it grew up to like seven or $8,000 per month. So now I had two people paying me part-time. One was more than the other, but together they started adding up to eight, six figures pretty quickly. And then after that, I got two or three more short-term projects from a different mentor who I would reached out to in my community who was also a freelancer who would basically just get projects sent to him. And whenever he couldn't do them, he would, you know, farm them out to a couple different people. And I was one of the people on his call list. And I got a couple different, you know, projects that were paying about $5,000 per month. Now, again, those are short term, but it was a nice boost in income. And so basically, by building under the wing of a couple different people, I was able to get these referrals and build up my book of business to where I was making, you know, $10,000 per month in about a year. And I believe I did that a lot faster than I probably could have if I just tried to go out and get a regular job. And so that's an overview of my story, you know, my entry into the software development field and how I scaled up my income pretty quickly relative to most people. So what are some lessons from this that you can learn and apply to your own situation? Well, first of all, you know, it goes without saying that if you're just still trying to learn to become a developer, you need to focus on that, okay? And you need to get good enough for someone to start paying you. Now, what what's the process like for that? And what's the bar at which you should say, okay, I'm gonna start looking for work. Well, basically you need to do everything that I talk about in this channel, you know, a immersive learning process, learn by doing, 
uh, and start building your own projects once you've built a couple in a guided fashion. You can look at any of the free tutorials I've got on my YouTube homepage. You can also, you know, click the link down below at adaptiversity.com for slash bootcamp if you want the fast track to doing that. So once you've done that, once you've built a bunch of projects and you've created at least one portfolio project for yourself, you've got a website to go, you're ready to start marketing yourself, that's when it's time to get out there. And what you want to do is you want to just find the first thing thing. And now again, you don't want to stress about how much money you're making at that first thing. You really kind of want to keep this low stakes and you really just want to get experience. You know, in my case, I was only making like $3,000 a month. Even if you weren't even making that much, it's okay. You just want to be paid something so that there is you know, skin in the game to where your time is being valued, there's expectations upon you, you're delivering the value and you're getting money in return. And then once you have that experience, you can start leveraging it to gain other projects. And so that's really the first step. Now, ideally, that first client can give you a little bit of money and it can be an ongoing thing. And that's really what you want to find is something where you have sort of a steady stream of income, even if it's not very much, but you want to have something that's leveraged because that's key. Because what you want to do is start building, you know, different clients and they're like Legos and you only have so much time unless you're outsourcing your stuff, which I don't recommend that you do as, as your beginner. And so what you want to do is once you've got that client as leverage, you want to add another one in there, another Lego, but you only want to add the right Lego, okay? And if you have some coming money coming in, you basically want to say no to everything else that's not a good Lego to add onto your stack. And so how do you do that? Well... Ideally, you want another Lego that's paying you more for the same amount of time as the previous Lego. So let's say that you're making $3,000 per month on your first client just to get some experience, okay? And let's say it's taking you 20 hours per week and you only want to devote 40 hours per week. Well, if you take on another 20 hour per week client, then ideally you want to jump up to like the $5,000 per month mark. And now... If you had $3,000 and $5,000, that's $8,000 per month. That's basically six figures per year. But you don't want to add on another $3,000 per month client at 20 hours per week because you know that doesn't get you to the next level. That only fills up your time with the same value and gets you stuck to where you have to fire one of your clients, basically, or just try to raise the rates to get to that next point. And I know this sounds counterintuitive. It's really hard to do, but you want to keep those options open, especially if you have some money coming in because you don't really need the extra money now to get to that next level. Also, worst case scenario, somebody wants you to work for 20 hours a week at the exact same rate that you're making with somebody else. Well, if you just say no and use that as leverage, you might be able to negotiate up to that next level. Maybe it's $5,000 per month to get to that 8K per month total price point. And so that's how you do it. Basically, you start with something at a modest rate and then you wait until the right thing comes along to fill up the rest of your time to get to that spot. So if you start at 3K, add it on 5K, that's 8K per month, roughly six figures a year. You know, once you figure out how to get a $5,000 per month client, it's not that hard to get another $5,000 per month client. You could always try to renegotiate your original thing or basically say, well, I found something else and then try to actually pit those two offers against each other. And then once you've got a second $5,000 per month thing, you've got two uh, that are paying you $5,000 a month. That's $10,000 a month. And you can keep going on this process. You could have one that's $5,000, one that's $7,000. You're at $12,000 a month. Yeah, that's basically what I did. If you really want to hustle, of course, you can work over time for a while. I don't recommend doing that long term. You're going to get burned out, but you can do that for short term bursts, make some extra money. And then over time, your income could average out. All right. So that's an overview of how you can increase your income as a blockchain developer to $10,000 a month or more faster than you could, you know, many other ways. This is exactly what I did when I first became a developer. Again, I was a developer before I got into blockchain, but these same principles apply to the blockchain space. I've done freelancing there as well. So I hope you like this video. As always, smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. And if you want to get go for the throat and take action on exactly what I'm talking about today, then definitely head on over to adaptiversity.com forward slash bootcamp. Okay, I can show you become a blockchain master step-by-step -step finish. You really don't have to be an expert to get started today. I've helped people with zero coding experience become real-world blockchain developers in a matter of months. So that's all I've got. Until next time, thanks for watching Dappy Diversity.